Hi, I just released my new website, don'timitate.dev, and I did it using Astro and Claude Code, and I had a great time. I want to give you a few tips in order to get the best results using LLM code generation for your own projects. And I'll use my website as an example. So here's my three tips. The first tip is to provide the LLM something to pattern match against. Remember, an LLM is really a prediction engine. It's a pattern matching machine. So the better patterns you can give it to follow, the more consistent outputs you'll get for your coding and the less editing and reviewing and updating and dealing with problems you'll have to do. So what I did was I chose Astro. Astro has lots of great examples out there for the LLM to pattern match against. And I chose a template, an existing template with existing components, because then I could point the LLM at components that I liked and either adjust them or build new ones based on those components. But because the LLM has patterns to explicitly follow, it ended up doing a great job. So look for templates with components, with examples, with things that the LLM can follow, an existing design system. That way, you don't have to spend time dealing with an LLM trying to generate things from scratch. Find something you like, and then you have the LLM build from there. I have much better success by having a core design already in place. The second idea, or the second tip I have for you, is to have a good core prompt with two things, constraints and examples. Same thing, this is about pattern matching, about nudging the LLM in the right directions with the words and patterns that we give it. The thing I liked about some templates I found out there was that some templates actually had LLM directions, a core prompt to give the LLM for that template. So for example, this Astro template had a core prompt that I could give to any LLM. So I put it in my Claude.md for Claude code. And it talks about things like using TypeScript. And in this case, it was a Tailwind based um, template and how to structure the files, how to use Tailwind in this case, and different examples for typography or semantic HTML and more. So that gave me a great pattern matching start. And then I just made some tweaks myself to make sure that the LLM was following things that I wanted it to do, understanding that it won't always follow this perfectly, but it does give me a good starting point. And then tip number three, spec, then plan, then implement. Don't just tell the LLM what to do and let it run. What I did is I have a set of specs. Now, this wasn't a massive project, so I just put it all in one folder. And for every iteration, every work I wanted the LLM to do, I would create a spec file. I would give it my goal, some background. I find that it's good to give background to the LLM because the code ends up being more readable. You get better function names, better component names, so it understands why you are doing what you're doing. Not that it really understands, but you're giving it words for it to pattern match against. Then I would give it some content. I would give it things to work with for building these pages. And then I would give this spec file to Claude Code. And I'd say to Claude Code, plan how to implement this spec and store the plan in a plan file. I can then review. So it can say, well, I'm going to go through this and I plan on doing that for pulling a particular example from a file, whatever the case is. So I went through the plan, made sure that it matched what I wanted it to do. Usually there was a couple of tweaks. And then I would say to Claude Code, now implement the plan. Notice also that I'm subdividing the tasks. There's task decomposition here. I'm not trying to have the LLM just output the entire site. That would be too much context. There's too many chances, probabilistic chances for it to go off the rails. So one piece at a time. So how did it go? Well, this is the new don't imitate dev. It's a home for all my courses and coaching and workshops and more. Uh, at the time of the recording of this video, it's Black Friday week, so I've got a special running. But notice I pulled each of these are either components that existed in the template or a component I created based on a component in the template. And that meant that I actually had to make very few tweaks as this was being built. I even took one, for example, added some animations to the images as they come in. 
In those animations, I asked the LLM, Claude Code, to build with vanilla JS and standard CSS. And it did a great job because it was a very focused intention for that. And it was actually something slightly outside of what the template did. But because I could focus in on just that piece, it took less time. So as you go from page to page, this all worked out the way I wanted. There was even a couple of cases like my upcoming workshop course on AI assisted development that I asked the LLM to basically do the design. I gave it the content and then I tweaked the design from there, but I based the design on existing pages in the repo. And that way it had something again to pattern match against. I gave it some images. I gave it specifications and icons, but in the end, the LLM actually did a lot of this work. Now, it didn't do the thinking work. I had to do the thinking, the specking, the tweaking, the fixing, or I had to give the LLM the necessary context to fix correctly. So the point being, with these three tips, I found that you can get some great results, especially if you're doing something that has been done before. So people have built websites in Astro before. So the LLM has what's called a distribution of data available to it, plus all of the pattern matching, all of the context I could give it. So give it something to pattern match against. Don't start completely from scratch with your LLM. Give it something to start with. You are the architect. It's the worker. At number two, give it a core prompt with examples and constraints. We can try to keep the LLM from going off the rails by giving it more patterns. And also make sure you're decomposing those tasks down so you're only doing a little bit at a time so you can keep the LLM on task. In the end, you'll save time that way. And number three, spec, then plan, then implement. You can learn about all these kinds of things and a whole lot more, by the way, in my new course on understanding AI-assisted software development. You can find a link to that in the description of this video. And I hope that you have a great time utilizing LLMs properly, understanding that they don't understand. They're just pattern matching probabilistic machines that are unreliable. But if you use them properly by understanding how they work under the hood, then you can get some great results very quickly. Happy coding.